I would just suggest as regards uh, the position of the body sit as comfortably as possible and feel free to change your position whenever necessary and I would recommend at least to begin with that we keep our eyes closed the only reason for doing this is that at least at this stage we are not exploring our visual perception of the world so closing our eyes removes the visual perception of the world and enables us to explore more intimately our internal experience understand and more importantly feel yourself to be the presence of awareness with which all experience is known I know that some of us here will already have been taking their stand as the presence of awareness before I even suggested doing so. I know that for others amongst us, just my suggestion was all that was necessary to soften the focus of our attention from its objective content and come back to the presence of awareness and I know that there are others amongst us for whom it is not yet quite clear what is meant by know yourself or be knowingly the presence of awareness so I would like to say a bit more about this if we were to ask most people to describe their experience of themselves as a person they would describe a, a series of thoughts, memories, images, emotions, sensations of the body, activities, relationships and so on. Very few people would mention the fact of being aware it's like asking people to describe the contents of the room in which they are sitting most people would describe the books the furniture the objects etc but not many would refer to the space why do we not refer to the space after all it is the larger part of our experience of the room because it is transparent, invisible it has no objective qualities similarly when we think of or describe our experience of ourself why do we overlook the fact of being aware or awareness itself after all, it is the larger part of our experience of ourself. Later I will contradict that statement and go on to say that it is the totality of our experience of ourself. But for now, let us say that our experience of ourself as a person 
comprises thoughts, images, feelings, sensations, perceptions and the fact of being aware or awareness itself. This amalgam of thoughts, images, feelings, sensations plus awareness constitutes our experience of ourself as a person. Just check the truth of this in your own experience. Now the only element of our experience of ourself that remains consistently present throughout all experience is the fact of being aware or awareness itself. Just as the only element of a movie that remains consistently present throughout the entire movie is the screen. Again, just verify this in your experience. Everything in our experience, apart from the fact of being aware or awareness itself, is temporary, changing, appearing and disappearing. the only element of our experience that doesn't appear, change and disappear, is the fact of being aware or awareness itself. And it is from this ever-present awareness that we derive our sense or indeed our certainty that I am always the same person. I have always been myself. It is obviously not possible to derive a sense of continuity and consistency from that which is always changing and vanishing. even during this last 15 minutes or so of this meditation, the only element of our experience that has remained stable, present, consistent, is the fact of being aware. Everything else changes and vanishes. And yet we all feel I have been present for 20 minutes. What is it that has been present for 20 minutes? I, awareness. Don't try to find the presence of awareness as an object of experience in the same way that we might find a thought, a feeling or a sensation. For the same reason that the eyes cannot see themselves, so we awareness cannot find ourself as an object of experience. We are too close to ourself. We can only be ourself knowingly. When I say we can only be ourself knowingly, I do so because most people 
are themselves the presence of awareness, but unknowingly, that is, without realizing it. Why? Because they have overlooked their self, the presence of awareness, in favor of the content of their experience. We don't become awareness as a result of this investigation. We just notice, oh yes, that's what I essentially am. I mistook myself, I previously mistook myself for a cluster of thoughts, images, feelings, sensations, which are constantly appearing and disappearing. Now I have noticed that what I essentially am is simply the fact of being aware or awareness itself. So in the first step, we recognize that as a person or a human being, we are not just a collection of thoughts, images, feelings and sensations. That is, we are not just a body and a mind. We are all of these plus the fact of being aware or awareness itself. A movie is not just a series of images. It is a series of images plus the screen. In the second step, having recognized the presence of awareness, we recognize that awareness is what we essentially are. It is our identity. When I say awareness is what we essentially are, I mean it is that element of ourself that cannot be taken away from us. Everything else, thoughts, images, feelings, sensations, etc. appear to us, they last and then they vanish. They are not essential to us, however intimate they may be. Our feelings, our relationships, our activities they are not essential to us. They are like the clothes that we wear, so to speak. We put them on, or we take them off. The only element of our experience that is essential and irreducible is the fact of being aware or awareness itself. So in the second step, we recognize the fact of being aware or the presence of awareness is what I essentially am. It is my essence, the core of my being. And as the name I is the name that we have given to ourselves throughout our lives, the name I properly belongs to awareness alone. How do we become aware of the screen when watching a movie, we relax the focus of our attention from the drama in the movie. The screen doesn't suddenly become visible as a result of this, but we suddenly seem to notice it. How do we become aware of ourself? We relax the focus of our attention from the drama of experience.
and our self or our being. The fact of being aware emerges, as it were, from the background of experience. We cannot take a step towards our self-awareness. We can only sink back into it. If you find yourself getting involved with or lost in thinking, just disengage. Take a step back. Don't try to stop the thoughts. Don't try to change the thoughts. Let the thoughts continue, but don't follow them. Just let them flow past you. You are the one that is aware of them. So the first, in the first step, we recognize the presence of awareness. In the second step, we recognize I am awareness. And in the third step, we begin to explore the nature of the awareness that I am. Most people believe and feel that their essential self pure awareness is so mixed up with or identified with the content of experience, particularly thoughts, feelings and sensations, that it shares their limits. that it shares the qualities of their thoughts, feelings and sensations. And it is this mixture of our self, pure awareness, with the content of experience, with the mind and the body in particular, that makes us believe and more importantly feel that I awareness am temporary, finite, limited, separate. So the separate self or person that most people believe and feel themselves to be is a mixture of their essential self plus their thoughts, feelings and sensations. So the first step we take in recognizing the nature of our self-awareness is to, to disentangle ourself from the content of experience. We separate ourself from everything that is not essential to us. We realize that it is not I, this person, or I, this body-mind, that is aware of the world. It is I, awareness, that is aware of the body the mind and the world. 
In other words, the body and the mind, this mixture of thoughts, images, feelings, sensations, perceptions, is not itself aware. It is something that we awareness are aware of. The body-mind is an object of experience. It is not the subject of experience. The body-mind is known. It does not do the knowing. The knowing belongs to awareness alone. If you would like an image to accompany this stage of understanding, imagine that you are in a cinema watching a movie and you are seated in the in the middle row, in the middle of the middle row. And you're watching a movie. The movie in this analogy is the world that we perceive. And you, seated in the middle row, is the person you normally consider yourself to be. So there's a person sitting in the middle of a cinema watching a movie in the same way that the person we normally consider ourselves to be watches the world or is aware of the world. Now imagine that your body remains in the middle row, but the awareness in you gets up and goes and sits in the back row. It's a simplistic and not very accurate analogy, but it will suffice at least for this stage of understanding. So now you have the movie, which is equivalent of the world. We have the, the person we normally consider ourselves to be sitting in the middle row, a cluster of thoughts, images, feelings, sensations. And you, the presence of awareness, uh, sitting in the back row, watching both the person and the movie. As I said, it's very simplistic and inadequate analogy. Later I will collapse the distance between awareness, the body, the mind and the world. But for this stage of understanding, it may be helpful just to take this image and allow it to help you feel that you are the awareness in the background of your experience, in the, f in the near foreground is the mind and the body, and in the further foreground is the world. And you, as the presence of awareness in the back row, you contemplate the person the body-mind in the middle row, just as the person in the middle row previously seemed to contemplate the movie. So now it is no longer I, the person, the body-mind, that watches the movie. It is I awareness that watches the body-mind and the movie. The body and mind are no longer the subject of experience. They have become objects or the content of experience. And just as previously we sat in the middle row, as a person watching the movie, enjoying the movie, irrespective of its content, because we knew 
and felt that we were not implicated by anything that took place in the movie. So now we, awareness, sit in our comfortable seat, our premium seat in the back row of the cinema, enjoying both what takes place in the person, that is the flow of thoughts, images, feelings, sensations, perceptions, and the movie, enjoying the entire contents because we know that we are not implicated by it. Previously, when we were sitting as a person in the middle row, we didn't just enjoy the pleasant scenes. We enjoyed the frightening scenes, the dark scenes, the chaotic scenes. Why? Because we watched them from the comfort of our seat, knowing that we remained untouched by them. So now, from our premium seat at the back of the cinema, we watch the content of not only the world, but the body and the mind, with the same affectionate but disinterested attention, knowing that nothing we experience has any effect on us. We don't just enjoy the pleasant images in the movie, we don't just enjoy the pleasant experiences in the body-mind. We enjoy the entire content of the movie. We enjoy the entire content of the mind and the body, the positive experiences, the negative experiences, and the neutral ones. Why are we able to enjoy the entire content of experience equally? Because we know that ultimately we remain independent of it. We are not implicated by it. Now for some of us, what is being suggested will be clear. And for some of us, it may not. There may be confusion. There may be agitation. For others there may be boredom. Remember the confusion, the boredom, the agitation are part of what you are experiencing. They are not what you are. Don't say or feel, I am confused. Say and feel, I know the experience of confusion. Confusion refers to the person sitting in the middle row. The presence of awareness from its premium seat in the back row is not itself confused. It is pure clarity, pure knowing. It has no colour or quality of its own. So 
if there is confusion, don't worry, don't do anything to get rid of it. Just observe it. Observe it with disinterested and affectionate attention. It's part of the movie. It is not what you are. It is what you know. If you are bored or irritated or restless, don't touch these experiences. Don't consider them failures of your meditation. No, they are just the conditioning of your mind. They are not what you are. They are what you know. And that which knows the boredom, the irritation, the restlessness, is not itself bored, irritated or restless. It is sitting in the premium seat at the back row, perfectly comfortable, perfectly peaceful, enjoying the drama of the movie. Be that one, knowingly. Just as previously, when we believed and felt that we were the person, the body-mind, sitting in the middle row, watching the movie. We never felt, I am the movie. We felt, I am the person, the body-mind. So now, we, awareness, from our premium seat in the background of experience, not only do we never feel, I am the world. We never feel, I am the person. This bundle of thoughts, images, feelings, sensations, perceptions, activities and relationships. They happen to me. They are what I know. They are not what I am. Previously, we believed and felt it was I, the person that knows the world. I, the body-mind that knows the world. It is now I, awareness, that knows the body, mind and world. Now we are still in our virtual cinema. We have the movie in the foreground that represents our experience of the world. We have the person or the body-mind in the mid-middle ground and awareness viewing it all from its premium seat in the background. Now notice that the person, the body-mind, in the middle ground becomes animated by what takes place in the movie. Laughs when something funny takes place, cries when something sad takes place, becomes nervous or frightened when something frightening takes place. In other words, the body-mind, the person, is animated in response to the world. But 
awareness in the background always remains the same, unmoved, unchanged, unaffected by the content either of the movie in the foreground or the person in the middle ground. It simply watches it all. It doesn't get lost in the drama that it observes, nor does it resist anything that takes place in the drama. It neither goes towards it nor moves away from it. Nor does it ever try to hold on to anything that is taking place either in the foreground or the midground. It simply experiences it as it is. Without resisting, without holding on to anything. and without seeking anything that is not present. It is just open, available, at peace. Notice that the person in the middle row may be changed or affected by the movie. But at the end of the movie, awareness in the back row will be in exactly the same condition that it was in at the beginning of the movie. It will not have been enriched or diminished by the movie. Nothing will have been added to it and nothing will have been taken away from it. And night after night, awareness comes back and watches a different movie. But it always remains the same. It does not gain anything or lose anything from the content of the movie. Its peace and its sense of fulfillment or happiness is not dependent upon what takes place in the movie, or indeed how the body and the mind of the person in the middle row may be affected by it. Likewise, we, awareness, always remain at peace and inherently fulfilled, irrespective of what takes place in the body, the mind, or the world. This is referred to in the Christian tradition as the peace that passeth understanding. What it really means is that the peace that is prior to the content of experience, prior to and independent of. A peace that cannot be known by the mind, in that sense it passeth understanding. It is not a peace that belongs to the person sitting in the mid middle row. It is a peace that only awareness in the back row knows about, or rather 
it is the very nature of awareness in the background. It is independent of the content of the body and the mind in the middle row and likewise independent of the content of the movie. In the Vedantic tradition, this same peace, the peace that passeth understanding, is known as Ananda. It is the, the quiet joy that resides in the background of experience, irrespective of the content of experience. The quiet joy that is the very nature of our being. It is not derived from experience. It is prior to experience. sometimes obscured by experience. But for one who is in touch with it, increasingly pervades experience. Now, without leaving your premium seat at the back of the theatre, allow your eyes to open. You are no longer listening to a podcast, you are watching a YouTube clip. In other words, visual perception has been added to your experience, but nothing changes. You remain in your premium seat. Allow your eyes to close again. Allow the experience of the body to come to your attention. With our eyes closed, the body is simply a flow of sensations. You are observing them from your premium seat the seat of awareness. This flow of sensations is not what we are, it is what we know. Just as when we opened our eyes, we didn't feel I am the world, we felt I perceive the world. Likewise now, when the experience of the body comes to our attention, we don't feel, I am the body, we feel I sense the body. And whether the, and just as the way the world appears to us, awareness does not affect us. So the condition of the body does not implicate the one that experiences it. Mm. 
later on, either later today or tomorrow, we will begin to collapse the distance and the distinction between awareness and the objects of experience. But for now, see if you can remain in your premium seat whilst you engage in activities and relationships over the next few hours. <laughs> 